Topic four, threaded inserts with SolidWorks plastics. How do we strengthen the connections with our injection molded part designs? Well, uh, when you want to include a threaded insert in your injection molding analysis, you need to have a separate body or multiple bodies in your part file. Uh, the plastic study must be solved using a solid mesh. Uh, threaded inserts add strength to the finished part. Uh, now a little side note here, you don't have to mold in a metal insert for threads and plastic parts. There are special screws that will cut threads into plastic, um, but you need to be aware that those threads will wear out with repetitive use. So we're gonna take a quick look at what it takes to include inserts in your molding design. So back to SolidWorks. Uh, here I have a multi-body part file. There's my cavity, uh, a couple of different threaded inserts are already in here. And what this would look like uh, if I start this project from the beginning would be something like this. All right, so I'll go ahead and just uh, use one of my existing materials. How about I choose Bay Blend? Uh, this component here, I'll specify as cavity. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and I'll just shift select all four of the inserts. Now this is gonna be done in two steps. I'm gonna choose insert as metal. I have my own plastics library of different metals to use. So let's say my inserts are 6040 brass copper. And then the last setup step that's important for working with inserts for injection molding is actually the insert properties. Now, this is going to be the temperature that the insert is when you put it in the mold tool, all right? So those are just the additional boundary conditions that you would need to do for including a threaded insert in your model, all right? So other steps that I would need to do would be focusing on, uh, you know, boundary conditions. So let's say my gate locations are at these four circles, those four split lines on the part. Uh, and then of course I would mesh and solve this study. So we'll switch over to this configuration here and we're gonna take a look at just a couple of outputs that are important when you're working with threaded inserts. All right, so we're gonna take a look at fill results. Take just a moment to load these in. And what I'm gonna do is animate this, but I'm gonna to switch to what's called ISO surface mode. All right, so I mentioned those inserts are gonna be a lot colder, or if I didn't, uh, the inserts are generally a lot colder than what your mold temperature is. So you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to how the melt front actually flows and fills around that insert, because as soon as that plastic resin hits that relatively cold insert compared to the mold walls, it's gonna solidify very quickly. All right, so one of the things that I would also pay attention to would be this output here, which is called frozen area at end of fill. All right, so for this particular output, anything that's in green on this part, um, the temperature of the plastic has already dipped below the glass transition temperature, so it's frozen. Uh, generally, you, you still wanna have a, a reasonable amount of your part that hasn't frozen by the time you get to the end of the fill process. Uh, if you have too much of your part that has frozen before you've gotten to the end of your fill stage, you're gonna end up with a short shot condition. All right, so that's just a couple of things that you can do or pay attention to when you're working with molded in inserts with SOLIDWORKS plastics. So the key takeaways there, uh, separate material properties and boundary conditions for the insert bodies. You wanna pay attention to the fill time plot, um, specifically the animation of, uh, you know, how that resin flows in and around the insert. Uh, because that insert is at a lot lower of a temperature than your mold walls, you're gonna freeze off early. Uh, and as all, also, as I mentioned, the frozen area at end of fill, those green regions indicate where the resin cooled below glass transition temperature. Uh, that plot doesn't necessarily indicate a moldability issue with the part, but it's something you should pay attention to when you're working with SOLIDWORKS plastics. Hey, Bill, quick right. question. Yes, sir. Absolutely. On that, on, that, uh, on that part with those inserts, did you, you created an assembly of those, uh, those inserts and then uh, subtracted them. Is that how you how you built that? Oh no, that's an interesting modeling question. So yes, it was done as an assembly, uh, and then in the actual cavity, uh, the, the actual plastic part, I used the cavity right. feature in SolidWorks to subtract out the the bodies that are the inserts. But then there's actually one additional step for SolidWorks plastics. Um, SolidWorks plastics will work with multi-body part files, but not an assembly file. So I take the assembly and I save it as a part. 
Right. Hopefully oh, that gets corrected awesome. uh, before too long, but yeah, right now it's multi-body part files. So thanks for, for that, Alex. Cool, cool question.